this presentation is about our autonomous greenhouse control method with a combination of Bayesian optimization and also model-based reinforcement learning that we use in the third autonomous greenhouse challenge. This competition is led by Wageningen University and Research from Netherlands and also Tencent. The goal for this competition is to maximize the profit by growing lettuce in a simulated greenhouse. And the final profit is calculated by subtracting from the price of growing the lettuce per unit area minus the upkeep cost per unit area, which includes things like uh, heating or electricity or CO2. We're able to control some parameters of the greenhouse, include heating set points or lighting or CO2 or ventilation. And we can observe some information such as the outdoor climate or the temperature and humidity inside the greenhouse or some statistics of the plant, which such as uh, the weight of the plant. The challenge of this competition we think is mainly threefold. First is we want a autonomous control that is free of human intervention. The second is limited data. We have very limited access to the server, so we need to use the data samples as efficiently as possible. The third challenge is data heterogeneity. Uh, by that we mean that there's different types of controls. There are some controls that need to be fixed throughout the planning period, such as the uh, material of the screen you want to use. There are some controls that can be changed per every other day, such as uh, the plant density, and other controls can be changed every hour, such as the heating and CO2 set points. A similar heterogeneity can also be seen in data. There's different types of information that are available to us. The weather data can be observed every other hour, but the statistics of the plant are only updated every other day. So to tackle those challenges, we have these design principles. First is that we want a fully data-driven method so that we only need minimum domain knowledge and our method can also adapt if the sensor that are available to us are changed. Uh, we also want the algorithm to be data efficient since the data access is very limited. We also want it to be able to handle different types of controls parameters that I mentioned before. So here's a quick overview of our algorithms. Coming from the different types of controls, we designed two modules to deal with controls with different properties. The first module is Bayesian optimization, and we use it on controls that are fixed throughout the planning period, such as material of the screen or the intensity of the lamp. For the rest of the controls, such as heating and CO2 set points and ventilation, we use model-based reinforcement learning. These two modules are not independent. They form a closed learning loop, and their results feed back onto each other to get an overall better control scheme. We will talk about the details of both of these modules, and first let's jump into Bayesian optimization. So what is Bayesian optimization? BO is a black box optimization technique. Essentially, it's a smart way to search different combination of controls since searching all possible control combination is essentially infeasible. So please take a look on the graph on the left. Suppose the X axis is some combination of control parameters and the Y axis is the night profit according to the controls. The red line is the ground truth curve of how the profit will react according to the control uh, and this curve is observable to us. And the green area and the green line is the model's estimation of this red curve. And uh, initially, it doesn't know anything, so it's just a huge square. So the algorithm may suggest that we search these two control points, and we'll use it to access the simulator and observe how the profit will react to these two control schemes. With those information, we we're able to update the model's belief of the controls versus profit curve, and it may suggest some new other points to try. And we we'll use these points to access the simulator, update our belief, and eventually we'll be able to find the maximum of the curve, which is at the red star. This algorithm works really well on low dimensional data. So we use it on controls that are need to be fixed throughout the planning period. Uh, such as screen material, lamp intensity, or the cap of CO2 output points. Since these controls are fixed throughout the planning period, we don't need to worry about changing them according to weather or something, and thus the dimension is very low, and Bayesian optimization works very well. What about the rest of the controls? This is where model-based reinforcement learning comes in. So reinforcement learning is a sequential decision-making process. What we have is an environment and an agent. 
at each step of the day, the environment will tell the agent what the current state is. To put into the context of greenhouse challenge, the state includes information such as the greenhouse climate or the statistics of the plant. And the agent will use that information to formulate an action. These actions are our control scheme, which include heating and CO2 set points or how to change the density of the plant. The environment will then tell uh, the agent how much reward it will get for taking this action at this state. Because reinforcement learning, we want a reward at every step. Uh, so we calculate the one step profit, which combines the difference in profit during one day and also the utility cost of the day. We will then use some RL algorithm to learn a policy pie that maximize the total reward or the net profit. In this way, it will take into account both of the reward it can get for this day and also how will the action will affect the future state. To improve data efficiency, we use something called model-based reinforcement learning. Initially, we just have some random policy and we use it to access the simulator to get some data. And we use this data to train a local greenhouse model. What this model does is essentially trying to mimic the behavior of the simulator. With a local model at hand, we can use RL algorithms to optimize a control policy that works really well on our local model. However, there might be some errors in our model, so we need to try our newly trained policy on the simulator, get some new data, update our greenhouse model, and optimize our policy again. Since we learn a local model in model-based reinforcement learning, all the data samples that we get from the server are always represented in some way inside the model. And the policy will mostly use the local model instead of needing to access the server. So this algorithm is very data efficient in RL literature. But how do we design and learn the model? Here are some more details. Instead of trying to learn everything altogether, we use some clever tricks to improve its efficiency. And this is the architecture inside of the model. Firstly, we notice that we can separate the simulated output into a few different groups. Uh, the red box is the control set points, which includes the heating, CO2, and lighting set points. The purple box is the indoor climate, which includes temperature, humidity, and CO2 concentration inside the greenhouse. There's also outdoor climate, which includes the intensity or the temperature and humidity outside the greenhouse. And also there's the green box, which is the plant statistics, which includes the weight of the plant and the dry matter content. The first part of the model is a climate model, and it tries to predict how will the indoor climate change in response to our control settings, the outdoor climate, and also the indoor climate from the previous day. The other model is to predict uh, the plant change at the end of the day according to the status inside the greenhouse for today, and also uh, the plan status from yesterday. Finally, we will combine the indoor climate, outdoor climate, and the plan statistic together as the state to give to the agent. We can also use this information to calculate the one-step reward that I mentioned. And this is the gist of our entire algorithm. So here's a quick recap. We have two modules based on optimization uh, on controls that need to be fixed throughout the planning period and also model-based reinforcement learning to learn the rest of controls that needs to be changed according to outside weather, et cetera, et cetera. This is an entirely data-driven method and the combination of BO and model-based part in RL allow us to use data samples very efficiently. If we were to apply this algorithm on a real greenhouse, this is something we call seem to real in RL literature and it's a state-of-the-art research direction we can just keep the same architecture and we just uh, need to gather some data and retrain part of the model. Additionally, the knowledge we learn on the simulator is not useless. We can transfer it to the real world through some modifications. This algorithm requires minimum domain knowledge, but if more domain knowledge are provided, such as, uh, for example, we know the exact cultivar of the plant and we know how exactly the weight of the plant will react to, uh, say, heating and CO2, we can just uh, change that part inside the model and keep everything else fixed. Since the model is now simpler, uh, the training process and the outcome of the model should be even better. And also, we don't, do not need to change the architecture if the settings are changed. Say we have a much larger greenhouse, we, or the greenhouse is at a different location with different uh, weather parameters, or we want to plant, say, tomatoes instead of lettuce. 
we can just uh, retrain part of the model and keep everything else fixed. And this model should also still works. This is the end of the presentation and thank you very much.